welcome again to another glorious session of the Sunday Class School. Yes. It's the place where the word of the Lord keeps prevailing and we believe it's prevailing in your life. Amen. Today, again, we are taking you out of our regular Sunday class to take you to the Leadership Summit where we discuss intelligence, natural versus artificial. Sure. Every third Saturday of the month. Please don't miss it. Join us. Yes. But today, the Sunday class school, we will be discussing spiritual intelligence versus artificial intelligence. Again, the topic for the Sunday class school is spiritual, spiritual intelligence, intelligence versus, versus artificial, artificial intelligence. intelligence. Please join us. Thank you so much for being here on this platform this morning. It's been a blessing. Thank you so much. This morning, the topic of the spiritual segment would be spiritual intelligence versus artificial intelligence. Yes, spiritual intelligence versus artificial intelligence. By definition, intelligence is the acquisition and application of knowledge to yield productive results. Types of intelligence would include, as we have been told, natural intelligence, physical intelligence, emotional intelligence, and artificial intelligence, and last but not the least, spiritual intelligence. Natural intelligence was seeded into man when God made man. Artificial intelligence is a byproduct of man's natural intelligence. It's a form of a computer technology designed to perform complex tasks that could later replace man, as has been said by many. The artificial intelligence that we see today is a foreshadow of who we are in Christ. I would like us to hold on to that thought. In this line of thought, artificial intelligence is not in itself bad. As we have said, it is a byproduct of the natural intelligence that God did place in man in the beginning. So whether you are a regenerated man or not, you are made by God, you have natural intelligence. And that's why people that are making breakthroughs on earth today do not necessarily have to belong to a certain religion or sect. They are men given intelligence like everyone else called natural intelligence and having utilized and harnessed this natural intelligence, it has produced artificial intelligence. Now, the fear of man is that would artificial intelligence replace me? And we have been told by our honorable professional speaker this morning, Professor Olu Lape, that we need not be afraid. So, it is a foreshadow of who we are in Christ, and we will find that out. Colossians 2.17 says, the things that we see now, they are a shadow of the things to come. But the substance belongs to Christ. Amen. Spiritual intelligence helps to elevate all other forms of intelligence. It is gotten directly from God by discernment, counsel, or word of knowledge, through meditation on God's word and seeking solutions from God's presence. We are transformed to this new being in Christ like the spiritual AIs 
That is like we are now spiritual AIs. I will be using AI for artificial intelligence, NI for natural intelligence, SI for spiritual intelligence, EI for emotional intelligence. So please follow. We are transformed to these new beings in Christ Jesus, walking the earth, displaying exactly what God is doing. So it is a foreshadow of things to come, things that Christ is the substance of. As he is, so are we in this world. How it all started, the making of natural intelligence. In Genesis 1, 26 to 27, we saw that God said, let us make man in our image. And it was said that God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him, male and female. The application to our Christian life in this is that in our natural state, we are created to be like God. We are built with the potential for growth and increased capacity in all good things, both artificial and spiritual. Artificial intelligence is good. AI is only a type, a foreshadow of who we are created to be, as earlier mentioned. We are the AIs of God, created to represent Christ on earth, to do what he did, is doing, and even to do it better. We are God's form of AI, but our efficiency comes through spiritual intelligence. Again, as he is, so are we in this world. After the placement of natural intelligence in man, with the fall, Adam chose to disobey God, which was evil. Since then, since there was the fall of Adam, the summary of man's advancement, though may appear good, has an evil undertone. It does not seek to establish God's plans, but the enemy's agenda. Since the fall, the heart of man has been desperately wicked. The doings of the heart will always reflect who rules it. Amen. So as we have been told earlier, who rules the heart determines what is produced from it or produced through it. So AI can be used to glorify God. Like we said, in itself, it's not bad. However, because man in his fallen state has a heart that is desperately wicked, we will also see manifestations that will not glorify God or directly oppose itself to the plan of God. When God gave man an eye, which is natural intelligence, we were made with the innate ability to know. Hallelujah. The devil did not give us the knowledge of good and evil. That God already gave to us. When he told of the tree, of which fruit we should not eat. So we already knew that this tree has a fruit, do not eat it. In that knowledge was good and evil. You knew if you ate it, that was evil. If you didn't, that would be good. God already gave that to us. Like I said, he only implored us to choose life by asking that we be obedient to him. Choosing life that is not eating their cause fruit would mean growth in our relationship, knowledge, and life of God. Choosing disobedience meant death to our relationship with God, death 
to increase in knowledge, which leads to foolishness. What is foolishness? Foolishness means to be more apt to carry out divine plans through carnal means. The first artificial intelligence was born out of natural intelligence. And we are looking at the scriptural example in Genesis 11. It talks about Nimrod, a great man on earth at the time. How be it a man born out of incest, a man whose heart was desperately wicked. But let's see the demonstration of natural intelligence through this man. It's written that the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And they said, let us, hmm, they came together as one. Let us build a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. Let us note that they wanted to build a city. They wanted to build a tower. Every idea of the enemy know that is a counterfeit of the original idea of God. It's a sneak peek to what God intends or is doing. They chose to build a city. They chose to build a tower. A city we know is what we, the sons and the daughters of God are likened to. For you are a city. A city that is set upon the hill that cannot be hidden. Hallelujah. You are set on the top so that your light can be seen. That is God's own spiritual intelligence. But as early as the time of Nimrod, with a heart that was desperately wicked, the enemy through him brought the whole people together and he sought to build a city. He also likened it to a tower. The Bible tells us that Jesus is the strong tower. His name is that strong tower that every man shall run into and they shall be saved. It is not by coincidence that we see these things happening in our world today. How be it, it is a sneak peek to better things that we could do in Christ Jesus if we understand the ways of God. So he said, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. So they had a goal. Any plan that does not hand have an end result or a sight, a goal in sight is not going to be productive. He had a goal. The top was to reach to heaven. And he said, let us make a name. Let us make us a name. Lest we be scattered abroad. So we see here that any form of intelligence that seeks to promote its own self rather than promote God's agenda is not of God. It is selfish, self-centered, and does not promote God. Those type of ideas are not of God. But the one that promotes the goodness of God in the land of the living, the one that showcases the power, the love, the majesty, the fruit of the spirit amongst men, that is the good one. So we can see the, 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 the backdrop behind Nimrod's agenda was to promote himself. He said, let us make us a name. And he said, so that we will not be scattered abroad. He was only postponing the doomsday. And we will soon find out. Because we are told in that passage that God came down to see. Hallelujah. He came down to see the city and the tower. To see what they were doing. And he eventually scattered them. The enemy still proposes to postpone the doomsday. 
by his actions, but they will arrive on him suddenly. The Lord saw that the people is one, the scripture says. That is a principle. That is a tool that God has given. God has given tools. God has given principles. It does not matter who uses them. Whosoever uses the tools that God has provided, whosoever uses the principles that God has laid out, they will prosper in what they have set their hearts to do. Hmm. Just like God said, he said, the people are one. That's the tool of unity. And then he said, nothing will be restrained from them of all that they have imagined. And that is another tool that Nimrod and his people use. Using the same knowledge of natural intelligence that God had placed in man. But they were now transforming it into their own artificial intelligence of their own age. They utilized the tools of unity. They utilized the tools of their imagination, which we were being told by our lead speaker. The lack of sitting down to think today is the undoing of man. Yes. We allow ourselves to be easily distracted, not channeling the energy we have been given into imagining ways and solutions out of today's problems. This is what Nimrod did. And today we are still referring to his artificial intelligence of those days. He was building a city, a tower. Let's move on. So the Lord did confound their language and the Lord did scatter them. So what they had thought came upon them speedily. The Lord is able today also. Whatsoever has constituted itself against you as a son and as a daughter of God. In his own manner of artificial intelligence, so to speak. Artificial intelligence in terms of utilizing their minds to, to, to imagine vain things. The Lord will scatter them for you today. He's still the same God yesterday, today, and forever. The application to our Christian lives today is that why does the hidden imagine a vain thing, says the Lord. He says, I love them to scorn and I will scatter them. He's still doing it today on your behalf. In Isaiah 54, 15, he says, yes, they will gather. <laughs> but they will gather not by me, says the Lord. They are not using it to glorify me. They are using it so that they will have a name for their own purpose. But the word of God says that they will fall for your sake. Amen. What we call witchcraft today is the evil imaginations placed in the hearts of men against us and our destiny. And we have just been shown that they will be destroyed. But how? God will show them to us because God himself in that time of Nimrod, he came down to see what was happening. It comes by sight. Our sight must be opened. We have eyes that can see. So we will see. And he, he said what? We will pull down all evil imaginations and works and scatter them. Yes, we are that empowered. Now let's look at Isaiah 50 verses 2 to 5. Following the foolishness of man, which we have seen in the life of Nimrod and the world as at that time, God now called out to spiritual intelligence. So we are looking at God's call to spiritual intelligence. We see that in Isaiah 52 to 5, God said there, he said, Wherefore, when I came, that's God, 
Was there no man? When Nimrod came with his evil ideas, everyone followed him. They were as one, we are told. But when God came with his own spiritual intelligence, wanting to give us that insight that only he can give, the true solutions to the problems of this earth. He said, was there no man? He said, when I called, was there none to answer? Is my hand shortened at all that it cannot redeem? Or have I no power to deliver? The application to our Christian lives with this is that unlike the devil who always seeks the crowd, God seeks a remnant through whom he will reach the rest of the world. Are we that remnant today? What God is saying is, are you available? With all that we have been taught today, will you apply yourself? God went on in this same passage to share his resume, his CV, as some of us will call it, or his dossier. He said, behold, at my rebuke, I dry up the sea. I make the rivers as the wilderness. The fish stinketh. I clothe the heavens with blackness, and I make sackcloth their covering. Most times, we pray against evil coming our way, but sometimes it appears the evil has suddenly come upon us, and you are staring at it. God is telling us his resume, his dossier, that whatsoever is facing us, whatsoever that situation is facing us, by tapping into his spiritual intelligence, and allowing his arm walk through us, allowing his mouth speak through us, allowing everything he says to be done through us, we will see that things, results are possible. Today we see different things happening and suddenly we see and we say, how did these evil things get in? Like as we mentioned earlier by some of the participants, the things that we see, coming upon the generations of today that a lot of us are pointing fingers but the three and a half or four fingers are pointing back at us how did they get in some of these things are infidelity how did infidelity get in how did immorality get in how did the use of drugs get in change sexual orientation how did that get in how did lack or poverty get in how did death get in the list is endless but the lord says through that same passage in isaiah 50 he says my hands are not shortened to save he says i will reverse it whatsoever is facing us today by God's own spiritual intelligence, which he will show us in a moment how to tap into it, harness it, and use it. He says, I will reverse it. How? Through you. Through you, brethren. Through us. He will reverse it. The empowerment of spiritual intelligence. That's the next thing we are talking about. The Lord God has given me the same Isaiah 50 says. He has given me the tongue of the learned. Remember he said he was looking for a man. This is what he had with him to give. He said he, he will give to us. He has given us the tongue of the learned. That we should know how to speak a word. And that usually touches my heart. It's time I read it. The Lord is not a man of many words, just a word. <laughs> but when we get that word, then we will know that that word is equal to fire. That word is equal to hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. That word is equal to the spirit of life, is a sharp sword, is, is the conquering tower. That word 
is upon his ways are upon the seas who shall know it amen he says i will give you that word in the right season at the right time exactly what you need to say to him that is weary to that situation that stands before you what is the resource for this knowledge how do we get this word the same passage in isaiah 50 tells us he wakens my he wakens morning by morning he wakens my ear to hear as the learned that is spiritual intelligence it occurs through the download from the spirit of god si it starts where the world has stopped when the enemy has brought all that he can do the spiritual intelligence that comes from god onto his chosen remnant that is where it starts where the world has stopped so whatsoever we know today good or bad called artificial intelligence there is something that trumps it that awaits you and i in god more of it if you're already manifesting it and that is spiritual intelligence it the, the pastor says the lord god has opened my ear and i was not rebellious neither turned i away now let's move on spiritual intelligence on display this is the elevation of man from the best man's natural intelligence can offer which is artificial intelligence to that which god can offer through man which is spiritual intelligence that is from deceptive foolishness to spiritual insights let's quickly look at some scriptural examples of spiritual intelligence to drive it home elisha Elisha's understanding and insight into the secrets of the king of Assyria. We know that story from 2 Kings chapter 6, where Elisha would know what the king of Assyria was planning with his cabinet members, his top members, in his bedchamber. They didn't even go to the Senate house or to the, uh, to, to, to the president's arena. They were in the king's chamber. And this man of God, who had spiritual intelligence, connected to the Most High God, could download from the Spirit. He had the Spirit to know and had activated it and was using it. He could download what the king was saying in his chamber and reveal it to the king of Israel. And so the king of Israel will quickly go and set ambush for the king of Assyria and defeat him. And after a few defeats, the king of Assyria was furious. He said, who has been telling our opponents? He wanted to know who amongst his own cabinet and discipline that person. And they said, no, it's none of us. It's actually Elisha, the prophet. He is the one who knows what we have been talking by divine intervention, by divine providence and has been telling it to the king of Israel. That is what we have available to us today. Just like the world, the Lord came down in Genesis to see what was going on. We still have that ability to see today. We, you can call it discernment. You can call it word of knowledge. You can call it whatever you want, but that is it. Now, let's move on to another feat by Elisha. Elisha went on and was called by the sons of the prophet that they had lost an axe head. Alas, they said, it was borrowed. This axe head has sunk into the river. It was made of iron. This prophet linked up with God and got the insight that all he needed to do was place a stick, a wooden stick on the surface of the river. And what we know today is that the iron axe head floated up so that they could now retrieve it. The problem with the Christian world today 
is that we have a quick default towards logic, towards things that are natural, things that we see rather than things that are unseen. And unfortunately, these other ways out do not catch the attention of men because they accept, they expect it. No wonder then the Bible says, the creature waits for the manifestations of the sons of God. How long would we dwell in the realm of natural intelligence? Or even crumble to, 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 to get into the realm of artificial intelligence and ignore spiritual intelligence. So we still have a journey to go. Yes, we have not even gotten artificial intelligence as we should yet, but spiritual intelligence awaits us. He did this, and today we are still talking about it. He did not make a name for himself by choosing to download what God said and doing what God said. He made a name for God. What people are seeking for is beyond natural, is beyond artificial. They are seeking the manifestations of the sons of God. Brethren, that comes by spiritual insight, spiritual intelligence. Why was he able to do that? That was what he saw God do. Jesus kept on repeating and saying it until hopefully it will sink into our hearts that I do what I see my father do. I say what I hear my father say. We wonder how he was able to do so much in three and a half years because he constantly lived in the presence of God. This is the secret to spiritual intelligence. Amen. When we look at Isaac in Genesis 26, we can also see he's tapping into spiritual intelligence by not going down to Egypt when there was famine in the Philistines, but stayed back in the drought to prosper in the drought where he was at the instruction of God. Again, that is spiritual intelligence at play. He applied the spiritual wisdom that he was given. He, he made a, a situation where in drought, his own plants were given water. That is the artificial intelligence of his own age. And he took it up a notch because he was able to download spiritual intelligence. Like we said earlier, spiritual intelligence elevates natural intelligence and artificial intelligence. Isaac showed that by what he demonstrated in uh, the land of the Philistines. And we are told they were all envious of him. Again, he made name for God, not for himself, by allowing himself to be a channel for God to show himself up on us. Are we willing to do that today? Let's look at Samuel and the sons of Jesse in choosing a king. Samuel keyed in to what was easy default when he got to Jesse's house. First, physical intelligence. He looked upon the physique. He looked upon the facts. He looked upon what he could see of the sons of Jesse. They were armies. They were men of war. They looked kingly. And he said, of course, this one should be. He looked at their social status, the way they related with the community, their emotional intelligence, their EI. He looked upon all these things and they were able to check the boxes. But God said, no, you have left one type of intelligence out. And I want you to key into that because that is what will show exactly what 
I want. And that was David brought out by Samuel keying into the access of spiritual intelligence. Until tomorrow, we know David as a man after God's own heart. If we want results that will last longer than we do upon this earth, we should begin to do the things that he tells us to do. Yes, Jesus himself demonstrated spiritual intelligence in many ways, but I have brought out just one for today's purpose. In Matthew 17, verses 21 to 23, he told his disciples, he said, this kind, this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Let's remember that Peter and the disciples had been, you know, like we see some men of God toiling over demons today, trying to cast them out. They had been sweating, trying to cast out demons, trying to cast out demons from this boy that had uh, epilepsy, uh, that would throw himself into fire and all that. They were trying to cast out that demon. They did everything they, they could do. They used their natural intelligence. They, they did gymnastics, used their physical intelligence. They used their emotional intelligence. Whatsoever intelligence we can find, they used. Though they could not cast out that demon. Then here came Jesus. And all he told to them was this kind. How did Jesus know one kind different from the other? That all the things they had done could have brought some results if it were another kind. But this kind, hmm, to know this kind in our lives, to know what to do about those naughty issues in our lives that require this kind, that are of a different kind. Those things we have prayed, fasted, waited upon that does not appear to be moving. The Lord, by the grace of spiritual intelligence today, will reveal to us the solution. Jesus said this kind, he knew this kind because everything the father says is what he hears. Everything the father does is what he does. And everything he sees the father do is what he would do. So he knew what the father would do in this kind. And he told them the secret. It was by prayer and fasting. Is this difficult to do? No. He told us that my yoke is easy and my body is light. The things of the spirit are spiritually designed. They are not logically worked out. We exercise ourselves in the spirit. Yes, for spiritual exercise, that is godliness, profits in all things. Meanwhile, when meaning that when we view things from the spiritual angle, we will always be right and profit because life is spiritual. We must dwell in his presence, tarry in his word. Fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit is the source of spiritual intelligence as he will teach and show us all things, as in 1 John 2. Isaiah of old said, in 1 Corinthians 2, 9, Eyes have not seen, neither at, he, at ear heard. It has not entered into the heart of man, the things that God had prepared for those he loves. Paul was quoting Isaiah in this passage, 1 Corinthians 2, 9. The first person who said that was Isaiah. But the same Paul immediately, a custodian of the mysteries and the revelations of God in the next verse, and that is the verse that most people do not quote. And that is why we may not find many walking in that next verse, which is verse 10. Paul said, by spiritual intelligence, he said, but God hath revealed them 
unto us by his spirit. So we are no longer living in the realm of eyes have not seen. With God, there is nothing eyes have not seen no more. With God, there is nothing hidden no more, except one is not looking. And may one be not one of those who have eyes that do not see. He said, but God has revealed them to us. We are no longer in the age of ears have not heard. We should stop quoting it. That's not the way it should be, it should be spoken. Immediately, we should add this verse 10 to say, thank you, Lord, because things that eyes have not seen, that some people have not seen, I see it. Things that some people have not heard, I hear it. Things that have not entered into some people's mind, oh, it is full of, it is, it is, my mind is full of it. Why? Because you have revealed it to me by your spiritual intelligence through the spirit of God. I know exactly what to do. Yes, I know how to make this invention. I know how to bring peace to the world. I know how to make these supplies abundant. I know what to do. And the Lord will not fail us. The Lord says, rounding up, in conclusion, he says here that in these present times, we have God's insight. Yes, we have SI. God has revealed everything to us, and so we should go out and do and teach them, which is what is happening in this forum today. In Acts chapter 1, we are told that Jesus both began to do and to teach. Amen. Colossians 4, 6 says, Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how you ought to answer every man. That is, you may know the solution to every problem. And we know it in Jesus' name. In conclusion, Ecclesiastes 12, 12 to 14 says, And further, by this, my son, be admonished, of making many books, there is no end. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. Yes, of making artificial intelligence, there is no end. What we have only seen, we have only begun to see. There are many more things that will be produced that will wow man. But the same Ecclesiastes 12 says, let us hear the conclusion, however, of the whole matter. Fear God. That is, make God your default reference. Run it by God. And, and it says, keep his commandments. That is, do whatsoever he tells you. Amen. So all those projects, it is time to brush them up. Bring them out. God has told us, we will do it in Jesus' name. He says, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment and every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. As we have said, there's the good part of AI. And truly, there's the evil part of AI. We witnessed some of it this morning. But as we have been told in Second, uh, in 1 Timothy 4, that all things created by God is good if we accept it with thanks and with prayers. Yes, we have to modulate it with thanks and prayers, standing in the presence of God, that what God has meant for good will not be turned for evil by men. So then, we, as the sons of God today, we will continue in the ways of God. SI, spiritual intelligence, is better. It is the mother of all other forms of intelligence. Amen. Again, we thank you for now you know that the spirit man in you, with the Bible says the candle of the Lord in you, is able to guide you. Yes, artificial intelligence is around us. We can't deny it. But 
you as a child of God, you can modulate it. That's I had my wife use that word. You can modulate it, you can guide it, you can make sure it is used to glorify God. Mm -hmm. My love, we like to pray for our viewers today who have learned about artificial intelligence and spiritual intelligence, but so that our spiritual intelligence will be the upper one in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving us the grace yes, to have access to you again. Yes, Thank you because you gave the grace, but through Adam, we lost it. Yes. Thank you because through the second Adam, you have reconnected us. Amen. We pray that as many as you have brought again onto this forum and watch this video, mm. will be restored back to the former glory that you had prepared for man. Yes, Lord. Even the glory that is in the knowledge of you, in the understanding of you. Yes, Lord. You said if you want to boast, mm -hmm. boast in this thing that you know mm -hmm. and understand me. Yes, Lord. Father, by way of mm -hmm. spiritual intelligence, yes, Lord. we will influence mm -hmm. our world of today. Amen. We will demonstrate your presence and power mm -hmm. in the world today. Amen. We will demonstrate only what you mm -hmm. can do. Yes, Lord. And the glory will continue to be yours mm. even as you bring humanity mm. back unto you in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, it's a privilege that my wife and I have to come your way to empower you to, to fulfill, fulfill your, your God-given God destiny. destiny. Amen. Amen.